What amazing music! Let's give a round of applause for all of our performers! Alright, hold on to your hats. Let's give some big thanks to the Monford players and their executive director, John Russell. And our very own Asheville Street Creature Puppet Collective. Thank you. So you know, part of our proceeds will be going to Pipeline Resistance. As well as local artists. Uh, you can find donation opportunities on the QR code on your program as well you can visit us at appalachianseason.com drop some coins in our hat and the world will get better uh, quick update porto potties are closed but you will find bathrooms for the entrance at the octagonal building you gotta go uh all right well this show right in front of you about to happen has been brought together by so many magical people with so much joy and creativity we have a real treat for you this is our baby and i am woody your artistic creative set director <laughs> Without further ado, Ancestor Forest. the Cherokee people of this land gave to parts of the French Broad River. Has anyone ever floated down my body before? 
Has anyone ever fished in any of the chattering children's streams that come down from the mountains and feed the long man as he makes his way to the sea? I see those fluttering fins. The long man's head is in the mountains and feet are in the ocean with his 10,000 chattering children whispering and filling his body. And I am the French broad because at a more recent date, this land here was full of French-speaking people. <laughs> and the English-speaking people down east wanted to be clear that this was the French Broad River. Oh, to differentiate it from the Broad River. Way out here. Way out here in the western mountain wilderness. And I am also one of the oldest rivers in the world. It's true. That's what they tell you. I found this story as a message inside a bottle. I hope not too many of you have found lengthy stories at the bottoms of bottles before, but that's where this one was, floating down my long body. And the story I'm about to tell you happened. It really did. It happened before, and it's happening still. It happened in a sacred place right here in the middle of this very city. A fairy forest. Some of you may have visited your own fairy forests before. Anyone have any special forest spots? But I'm also telling you this story because my little friend, the dragonfly, really wanted me to tell you. There she is now, can you see her? The dragonfly. She remembers in her bones, don't you? From way back, 300 million years ago, from the time of coal, forests existing on the earth. But that part comes later. Let's start in the present moment, shall we? Are you ready for a story? Are you ready for a story? You've all heard of the fairies of the groves, haven't you? haven't you? The forest creatures, the spirits of the woods. This grove is full of the creatures of this land. Somewhere among the rocks walks a red salamander. And 
some of them love to perch in trees. The fish, the fish of the water, jumping in the creeks. There are not so many brook trout anymore, but we do have our rainbows. And the flowers of the meadow blooming. loves to sip on the nectar of flowers. What? Who? What? Antelopes? I can't hear you. Bees! Where are the honeybees? If we all buzz loud enough, it will appear.
are rich with moss and treasures, jewels and water, soil and mica and life, spirits of water and earth. Here come visitors. the woodcutter and his daughter come to the forest to enjoy it together. Taking it all in. Admiring the river. She sees the dragonfly too. decides to go fishing. The fairy and the daughter see each other as if for the first time. Magic is in the air. 
The woodcutter hooks the largest fish he's ever caught. <laughs> Round of applause. <laughs> They run back to meet each other. They have a lot to share. <laughs> she saw a fairy, she tells him. Oh, the woodcutter rests. Who here takes naps? The river doesn't. I keep flowing. And yet, the greedy eye always seems to be watching. remember yesterday it wasn't long before they found the grove too the creatures are afraid I don't know what drives them do you it all. Trees, water, air, your mind. They do. Your allegiance, your belief. plan they've been using for thousands of years. They take their food, they take their land, they take their culture, they take their dreams, they put them to work. And we feed your children rotten candy. Not the good candy. That's not a good candy. His daughter runs to try to be with him. Of course, he wants to protect his child. What can the creature do? What can the fairy do? Really, what can a fairy do? What can a fairy do? But after the woodcutter cuts down all Southern Appalachia. <sighs> Keeps digging. And in the soils of Central Appalachia, they find coal. So they chop the trees, they dig the soil, and they cut down the mountains and poison the air and the earth and the sea. Then they decide they are the rulers of this land. And the henchman is deputized. That's what they do. Little dragonfly, little 
little dragonfly. Take the fairy a message. Take the fairy a message, please. Please take it. Yes. yes. Go. The woodcutter's daughter asks for coal to keep the household warm. They give her and they give him a tiny, tiny, tiny piece. take back the money earned digging it. Ever feel like that before? And they put him right back to work. This sort of abuse can only last so long before there's some sort of revolution. Fairy, have you gotten the message yet? Got the message. Keep me clean. Come on. There is something that needs to be done. What is the... And the fairy calls the creatures of the air. Crow calls. Let's hear it. swelled the river's banks as has happened as long as I can remember and it grew into a flood and the flood came there are more waters rising this I know flood of rain this I know there are more flood of waters grief. I know. Flood of loss. There are more waters rising. They will find their way to me. There are more waters rising. This I know. Flood of anger this against I injustice. Know. There are more waters rising. This I know. There are more it's waters all just rain. rising. This Washing I know. through the cuts this and I scars know. that humans in the earth have made. Flood of pandemic. Flood
flood of protest. And the flood swept away the hitch from And the flood came for the corporate eye and swept it away. But alas, these waters do not discriminate. And the woodcutter was swept away as well. Fly, crows, fly, find safe ground. Flood, flood washing mountains to ocean, flood bringing soil and silt and tilth, flood of war, flood of tears, coal and waste, erosion and earth all poisoning my body. They are poisoning it to this day. And sometimes, Sometimes everything seems lost. I sat under the willow tree. I asked the fairies to comfort me. They wrapped me up in their ancient arms. Grove is destroyed. Oh. Daughter, daughter, whisper your grief to the earth. She will hear you. Speak to the earth, daughter. Speak to the earth. Tell you, speak 
waters of the river and the waters of the earth heard her grief and swirled, swirled around her asking the fairy for help. And there's nothing so powerful on this earth as your authentic tears. The fairy, the fairy's going back to the source. calling up waters that had long been closed in her own heart. Calling the waters, and who should listen? Who should hear? But Grandmother Ocean. Grandmother Ocean. I was ancient love. Remember what has been forgotten. The dragonfly is excited for me to tell you this piece. She wanted me to show you this. This is the part of the story she wanted me to tell. Isn't it? Isn't it? Show them. Show them. This is the story of the other species who did not survive. First up, the Carolina parakeet named Incas died at the Cincinnati Zoo on February 1918 in the same cage as the last passenger pigeon. 
The Carolina parakeets loved seeds, nuts, and especially mulberries. Who here loves to eat mulberries? Who here knows where a mulberry tree is in this very city? These birds would have met you there. Causes of species death, deforestation, and capitalism. Their feathers made such pretty hats. And now for the next extinct species, the giant! Giant sloth. Huge creature. That's right, 15,000 years ago, we're going back. 15,000 years ago, glaciers covered most of the northern hemisphere. Almost nothing large could live there anymore. Any creatures that could migrated south ahead of the ice. Receded. Many of the animals stayed here, right here, like the giant sloth. The giant sloth was one of them. Just look at those claws. <sighs> Next up, we're going to go back even farther. Let's hear it for. The Eocene Whale! Woo! That's right, the Eocene Whale. 55 million years ago, the spot we were in was on the coast of the Atlantic Ocean. If there were any people then, which there were not, you could have stood right here and looked out over the sea. Many strange creatures swam there. One was a 60-foot-long whale with giant teeth that could chew. It could chew. That whale. That whale descended from a hoofed land animal who decided they would rather go back to the ocean. Their cousin stayed on land and is now your cow. Because, because the Eocene whale. Oh, let's go back. Let's go back again through the portal. Go back 300 million years ago to the Ancestor Forest. The time when the forests that made coal were alive on this earth. And I was but a tiny trickle in my mother's eye. The earth then was covered in forests of giant ferns, cycad trees that later became the carboniferous coal that started the age of fossil fuels in your time. Did you know that six mountain ranges have risen and fallen right here since then? I have flowed through all of them. The air was so rich with oxygen that creatures grew huge. Insects, millipedes, and most magnificent of all, wait for it, the giant dragonfly! A 
sight to behold. And the fairy, the fairy fell. of the cycad trees and the forests of so long ago must become the coal we burn and kill and die for. Bodies of the dead to heat our houses. Bodies of the dead to cook our meat. What will you do to remember the ancestor forests? The fossil fuels they have left us. And soon these species we have had the honor to visit with today must process back. And you will be left with their bones.
give thanks, when we forget to remember where it all came from and where it all started. That is when the true death occurs. The woodcutter's daughter wants to return home. So Grandmother Ocean brings her back with the tide. The fairy does not want to go. But now the portal to the past is closed. The fairy collapses in grief, losing both her soulmate and her sacred grove. And nobody wants the bones the grove was destroyed for. Do you? How will we remember the bones we use for fuel? Has the woodcutter's daughter seen enough to understand? No! Her father survives, and she will journey for 15 years before she returns. Goodbye. Wish her well. It's not yet our time to join them. In fact, it's time to decompose and transform. Ah, <laughs> oh, the Reishi tree stump. Applause. Appalachian forest the springtime brings A floral celebration fit for elven kings And fallen logs have sprouted little wings I see Fallen hemlocks of gray girl Return their essence back into the
Ah, those comics, so bright. Hello, crows! Ah, oh, always one watching from a tree. They're tricksy birds. Did I tell you they could count to eight? <laughs> oh, and dragonfly, are you still here? I am one of the oldest rivers in the world. Have I mentioned that? Come, come. Yes. Oh, so beautiful. So beautiful. I have seen a lot decompose and return from death in my time. Fifteen years have now passed since the grove was cut. And one day, one day, the woodcutter's daughter returns. She returns as we all return to the places of our grief and our initiations. Have you ever gone through anything like a decomposition? Do you hold any old bones in your hands? She has three streaks of silver in her hair. places seeds in the earth. She saves food for the crows of revolution. And she uses her voice. It takes many seasons to heal. But the creatures listen, and they will wake up, because the earth is alive. The earth is alive.
been persimmons gift out their sweet mirth and chestnut abundance rains down on the earth with the leaves burst in colors before they fall down and blanket the roots and the seeds underground when the forest grows quiet and lets in the sky in which shades of blooms when Shadows grow longer and the snow falls and rise. We remember the earth is alive. The earth is alive. She's alive. She's alive. The earth is alive. Happy Earth Day weekend! Remembering to thank the fairies. Happy Earth Day weekend!